Gonna make a few points before we get started. Number one, I'm a spin slash ripoff of CinemaSins, but I'll also be getting rid of the insert amount of time for opening logos cliche from now on. Number two, I talk about zombie survival more than the movie's filming, cinematography, and writing itself, but may talk about it anyways because it's my channel. And number three, I have to make these points pretty quick because people have short attention spans and they're gonna comment anyways. Okay, that's out of the way, on to the video. <laughs> So Blake Anderson lost his job at Telemericorp and is now a janitor? This economy has been real tough, man. If we didn't learn anything from 28 Weeks Later, janitors should not have full access to biological containment centers. This scientist just lets the janitor be alone in a private room with a test zombie? What could go wrong? So this zombie was fine with him basically riding him cowgirl style, but once he blew his load in his chest, he decided to wake up for a quick bite? Because it's not a zombie movie unless the scientist is smart enough to reanimate the dead, but dumb enough to let it break out in the dumbest way possible. At least we get somewhat of an origin story, right? The overly powerful zombie lets Blake have his moment of help me, help me, long enough so he can drag him away while a doctor sits there and stares at a bag of chips. Rule number one of being a zombie, always wait for a human to turn around and scream before attacking them. This do, do I, I swear, swear to, to live courageously, courageously, to help others when I can, defend when I must, so help me God. It's like this scout oath was tailor-made for zombie apocalypses. No really, most of this is point for point from the real scout's oath. Minus one sin, because it is an interesting take on the genre. <laughs> What the fuck was that? That's a deer. It's not a teenage focused film unless a pretty girl slow-mo walks in with music playing. Oh dear, it got up and trained to Busan away. Cheap jump scare, can't stand those. Oh dear, yes I made that joke again. I guess it's not on a vegan diet anymore. At least we know this particular zombie virus isn't restricted to just humans and primates. Another instance of zombies waiting to make noise and or attack, long enough for a person to turn around and scream. Wait, what? Let's dial back from the zombie sins for a minute. It's clear these kids were paying a mentally ill homeless man to get them some beer. When that failed, the kid went in asking for his money back from the guy who was gonna buy them beer. Then the stripper goes in, takes the money from him and buys the beer and clearly hands the beer to the underage really kids in plain sight in a glass door. Wasn't the point of handing money to the guy in the first place to be discreet so they wouldn't find out that an adult was buying them beer because that is illegal as hell. The Scoutmaster is in the woods for a few minutes and is attacked twice. The teens are there all evening setting up camp and messing around without any intervention. Generic, there's no cellular service right before hell breaks loose cliche. I'm gonna go ahead and remove a sin for the pun of Lawrence of Alabia and the fact that the neon sign's word for live is flickering, a nice little hidden touch. Zombies apparently have the know-how to perfectly strip dance on a pole while wearing high heels and lure in horny teenagers for a bite, but then get scared away by money? Her head starts separating, oozing out blood just by being upside down, but then she goes back to her regular stripper routine fully intact while two tasty meals run away? Hey man, you gotta make a living. The zombie bouncer waits to attack them right over there while they scream, despite one of the teens already screaming about how awesome this is that they are there with the stripper. <laughs> These zombies seem to be smarter than the average corpse and work to serve the art of the jump scare. Where the hell did you come from? While that was mind blowing, were you just chilling in the zombie infected strip joint expecting visitors? Hello, Dolly. That's not a sin, just wanted to make that pun. Also, screw a cardboard cutout of Dolly Parton. He needs to get a cutout of the sexiest being alive. So they all agreed it was a zombie without outwardly saying it, but she blows out his chest so they can have the, yup, zombie, part. Waste of ammo stripper. <clears throat> I mean, cocktail waitress. Don't want to mislabel you. Well, at least for once in a movie, the sound of a shotgun actually attracts the attention of a town's population of zombies. Minus one sin. I have to applaud the realism of this situation. In a panicked state, a teenage driver drives over a curb and fucks up the front wheel he replaced earlier. And the cocktail waitress actually doesn't have an infinite supply of ammo. Minus two sins. 
are their special infected? This one zombie decides to go on all fours and go full sprint while the rest remain at a speed walking pace. The Scoutmaster zombie attempts to grab Augie without making a sound. The Scoutmaster zombie decides to formulate a different plan of attack. Scoutmaster Rogers just sits there and stares at Augie despite trying to be stealthy and quiet earlier just so he can slowly walk up and... <laughs> Barricading the door a second before the horde slams against it, cliche. You gotta wonder where this horde was when they went to get liquor at first. Wait, you lit him on fire and whacked him with an oar and somehow you were able to tie up his burned, still living corpse? I didn't know zombies could be unconscious, unless you hogtied him like a pig wrangler. How did this wig survive the flamethrower? Let's take a selfie with these zombies. Because you know, we are dumb teens and all our generation does is take dumb selfies, even in dire situations. Never thought I would see zombies give up with living human beings right in front of them. Augie figured his friends and the zombie horde were in the police department, set up a crank that soldier boy distraction, and screws up by hitting a nearby car alarm just to go back into the department while being chased. Big oof. Augie has enough time to kick the keys in the hole and pick the lock on the cell only for one zombie out of the dozens that were chasing him earlier to show up and get impaled. They escape just in time before the horde would have blocked off their only exit route. Yet another zombie booby time that I must censor with images of my cat Paige. This zombie's top pops off and somehow stays stuck to the fence, all while this guy stops to cop a feel. That's technically necrophilia, bro. I'm sorry. This zombie on the road is at such a slow pace, different from all the running zombies from earlier, that they can have a debate over killing it, then a debate on how to dispatch it. Guys, my loneliness is killing me and so are these zombies from Michael Jackson's Thriller taking a break from flesh eating to breaking out into song and dance? Again, not a sin, but I guess he saw something jaw dropping. Now we're at the point in the plot where our protagonist have a falling out, but let's go ahead and yell out loud in the open. That's not going to attract any attention, right? He was bitten and managed to drive up, kill Britney bitch, drive the teens away for a bit and turned while parked. Didn't Blake from earlier turn in half a minute? Wow, that is a quick response that I'm not used to seeing from zombie movies. The military is gonna take action. That bitch is on a rascal! Neighbor Granny Zombie stealths her way into the house. Zombie on a trampoline jumping. While funny, what? My, my, Grandma, what big teeth you have. And what a ninja you've become. Okay, now screaming is attracting attention this time? This zombie said screw stealth and just breaks on in. I'm having trouble figuring out how these zombies function mentally. They are either smart, fast, and stealthy, or are a generic, slow, walking stereotype. Is it dependent on stages of infection or rigor mortis? Now we know Granny eats ass. Now that the double zombie fight is over after two minutes, now it's time for the rest of the zombie horde to enter all at once. Why do they always wait? Why is there always just one or two that attack and then they wait? No other zombies go for a jump on the trampoline, and this wimp packs enough punch to send a zombie flying. No zombies try to jump over or climb this wall, despite watching most of them go over. I can't really show the scene, but basically this kid prevents himself from falling by grabbing a hold of an old man's dick as it stretches a few feet and eventually rips off. Minus one sin for a genuinely good gag. Oh, get the lights. You wouldn't want to have lights on anyways. No need to advertise your whereabouts. This zombie catto doesn't immediately attack and does the typical let's wait till they see me before attacking. Zombie cats would genuinely be scary. I don't know about you, but if cats want to bite you, they can. And avoiding a bite from a cat is going to be a bitch. Crashes through a building loudly and they can have this montage of arming up without any zombies showing up. The military is supposed to be air bombing the town in two hours. Plenty of time to have this montage, drive to the party, and fight, right? What? How is this jawless zombie biting down on people? And oh my lord, I hope Steve Harvey isn't watching this. This newly turned zombie ignores a whole crowd of people just so it can wander to the douchebag, kill him in this scene of karmic retribution. You ever notice how zombies can easily bite and kill non-important characters, but will have the hardest time trying to get someone who has plot armor, even while they are pinned down? These zombies conveniently stop attacking when the scouts show up and enough for them to look at each other in a bro moment. To correct myself from the last video, press B to slide. Another pausing bro moment not interrupted by zombies. With how sporadic the lighting is and how it is basically 28 weeks later where you wouldn't be able to tell who was infected and who isn't, I would definitely say they at least performed some friendly fire and killed a human or two in this scenario on accident. Cocktail waitress somehow finds them and gives them an escape route just in time. 
Do the scouts teach domestic terrorism? A frag grenade randomly appears to blow up Scoutmaster Rogers. I want to say this movie had a perfect opportunity to have them sing Dolly Parton with Scoutmaster Rogers after showing that A, zombies that were big fans of musicians before turning will somehow start singing along if the song starts playing. And B, the movie spent a bunch of time, props, and scenes showing how much Scoutmaster Rogers loved Dolly Parton. It seems like wasted material that this guy didn't start singing Dolly Parton with the characters. The army shows up instead of launching a bomb strike because one girl said, don't please, I have friends. Because the semi-cute nerdy guy always gets the smoking hot girl in the end. Come on. And we are getting ahead of ourselves with this last sin. The end. Wow. 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 Cause I'm a stupid fucking cat and I don't know shit And I don't know what it is to be sad Hey! They just found the cure for AIDS! You just have to inject yourself with all your cash! Ha! Jeez, can you give me a break here? I clean toilet. What? I clean toilet. They see me rolling. They hate Leader Rogers?